you know, whatever. That works. We'll just deal with that. Um, Alrighty, today we are looking at the external data plugin. You're probably thinking, what? I've never heard of that. That is because I made that. A um, bit of a custom plugin. Oh, shit, that's right. Windows does that. Um, uh, let me get back everything. Um, that is right. I <laughs> made my own plugin um, just for a couple of things. Uh, bits and bobs here and there. So it comes with the... Uh, plugin as well as an example project just on I'll put this link in the video description oh, oops. put this link in the video description but um, you know it comes with this example project I have open as well as the plugin and then you can just um, oh, where, where is this saved this why I don't only there we go that works um, alrighty so um, and then you get the project file like this and then in plugins there it is so you just copy this folder to either your engine wide plugin or folder or a particular project you're working on that needs this plugin. Um, so what does a plugin do? Uh, basically, you get two, so it's it's blueprint still in the end. Um, so you get two blueprint nodes with it. Um, it's actually under my name, here we go. <laughs> you get this load float data and this save float data nodes, like so. Um, and so what this will do for you is simply save out an array of floats and then read back an array of floats at a later date. Um, so they get stored in the uh, in your project saved folder under blueprint data, and then um, you know depending on what you put in the file name will depend where in here it gets saved. Um, and they get saved as these uData files. So they're bytes big 71 bytes they're really tiny um now why would you want to save them out like this is the next question um this is for getting this is not for just like storing data like these these variables are better for that job this is for getting data between game states so whether that be when you're in play mode versus when you're not in play mode, or if that's um, a packaged version of the game that you want to get data from that back into the editor. Um, so the example is, uh, let's say you've done my VR, no, virtual camera in VR. Is that what I called it? The VR camera tutorial. Um, for your set, you've packaged that up as a final game, you know, package, windows, um, you know, so that whoever you give it to isn't going to rip assets out of it or anything like that, edit it, steal your stuff, whatever. Um, and, th but you want to, you know, they're going to find a camera shot they like. You want them to be able to save that camera shot so then you can open it back up in the Unreal Editor and be like, oh yeah, this is the camera shot you came up with. Um, so that's where this plugin comes in because you can, you know, use these blueprint nodes to save out float data. So in the case of my camera, you know, we are, um, at the moment, we're just storing the camera's transform so location and rotation, but you could add anything that can be stored as a float. Pardon me. Um, so that obviously that's like your uh, um, lens, focus, it's pretty much anything, like integers can be stored as converted to floats, um, like transforms can be stored as floats like there's pretty much most variable types can actually be stored as a floats booleans can be stored as a floats integers floats can be stored as a float colors can be split off into vectors which can be stored as floats the only things you can't do is save out a string because strings can't be turned into numbers well look if you want to you could write 26 letters in the alphabet 26 numbers um i would not recommend it though um, so you can save pretty much any value out then with this as a float. Um, and then you just ask them, because this will show up in their save game folder with all their screenshots and stuff, just be like, oh, hey, send me back these uData files. They're tiny. <laughs> um, and then you can just load that back up in the editor. And 
continue where you left off. So that's that's the um the best use case scenario. Um, another one would be transferring quick changes from two copies of Unreal. So like um, this one is a, a less not as strong a use case scenario. So um, the blueprint we have here shows two examples. First of all, um, what key did I set it to? One. All right. So the first example we're going to do. So there's this load blueprint here. Data save and load. I've got a couple of buttons here as well as some different things. So we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna hit the zero on the camera position, and we go. We've got our camera, cine camera actor selected. So uh, what we do is if we hit play and we fly the camera around, and we I don't, we choose this one. I hit one. It says save one. Um, come down here. Hit one. Save two. Um, up here. Save three. And we stop. Now, the camera has reset back to its position. It's like, oh, damn, I lost those camera positions. Um, now, you can use the bookmark system in Unreal. Um, that is a thing. Uh, my problem with the bookmark is it saves location, but not other camera data, and it doesn't work outside of the editor. So, um, But what we can do is we can come back over to the data, save, and load. Uh, we can choose our camera position. So we save three camera positions. So it'll be one, two, and three. So uh, if I say one and hit load camera data, our camera is going to jump over to that position we're in. If I hit two and hit load camera data, it's just jumped over here. So already we're getting, and zero will be the last one, already this is a really quick way to get, you know, our play mode stuff back into the editor quick smart. So one load camera, you know, and, and you could save these as just camera positions. You know, this work, this technically you could set this up to work straight in the editor. Um, just turn the, the one into like, you know, make a custom event, save, save camera, save camera, and then just hit call in editor. Compile, and then all of a sudden we have a button, save camera. All right, so the other thing I have in this is if you wanted to, in my example of simple things to transfer between two copies of Unreal, um, or just as a way to save these and, like, you could use this, you know, as a universal thing. Like, we're going to save all these, like, lights for all these different studios, I guess, different Unreal projects, um, is the light one. So under here I have load and save light data, and we have light setup versions. Um, so th what this means is if I go, like, setup one and hit save light data, it's going to say saved. Then if I move these lights around, change their intensity and their color, make that one blue, uh, green, not blue, Make this one blue, uh, make this one just white, I guess, and I don't know, move the sun to be directly above, yep. Okay, and then we go back to our light and we say this can be setup number two. We can hit save light data, it says saved. So if we go back to here and type one again and hit load light data, alrighty. <laughs> Problem fixed. They've changed the way the garbage collector works in Unreal in the editor, I believe. Uh, making this a little annoying to work in editor. So now, if we uh, da, 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 change that to red, um, keep keep these as things actually. Um, so we go light setup and then we go save light data. It says saved. Um, oh, don't mind those extra parts that I just put in that in there for debugging. Um, let's change these to different colors. Let's say blue, and this can be red. Uh, and then we say this is light setup version number two. Save light data. If we switch this back to one and hit load light data, it changes back. Uh, the sprites on the lights don't update. So like this is emitting a red light and yet the sprite says it's blue. Um, it even says it's red here. I I don't know why. Um, I just, I straight up don't know why. I don't quite know how these sprites work to begin with. I, they are a 
material, maybe? I don't know. It's strange, but yeah, there you go. Uh, so if you wanted to fool someone into thinking these were different lights, and then we can go back to number two. So I type two again, hit load light data, it switches back. So what does a blueprint look like? Um, let's get rid of these. All right. First of all, what was going wrong before? Basically, uh, originally I was, get, so we're getting every light in the scene. Um, we're storing that in a variable. Um, and then for each light, we are going to essentially run this. Essentially, it gets its transform and its color and its intensity, uh, spits out an array of those floats and s saves that data. So each, you know, so we get, you know, all of these files for each one's a different light. Um, so that that works pretty easy. This is what, so we so it's going to be stored in a folder called the map name of the map, uh, and then it's like you know what a what light is it based on the array, and then what setup version. That's how we're naming the files. Uh, now I, originally I was then just calling this array back. Um, that way every time it's going to be in the right order, no matter what. Um, Sadly, for some reason, Unreal isn't setting this array. It's not actually putting data in this array when this runs in the editor. Um, I'm not sure if this has to then be public or what to get it to do that correctly now. Um, that must be something like really recent. So at the moment, I'm just doing the exact same thing. I'm getting the, all the actors again. Um, and then we're doing the basically the exact same thing in reverse. So we're running the exact same file name code to get the file name in the opposite, you know, except we're using the load float data rather than the save it, and then we're splitting out the array. Um, this macro here is literally just turning all the different data back into some more handy versions of it, and then we're obviously setting the rotation, location, the light color, and the intensity based on that. Uh, so it's all labeled, so hopefully it should be pretty easy for you to reverse engineer or think up your own stuff. Um, for the camera, uh, we are doing a very similar thing. So first we're making a name for the file. So adding a... is that a forward slash or a backslash? I think that's a forward slash. Adding a forward slash will then turn whatever's between the two forward slashes into a folder. So keep that in mind. So it's then going to give us our camera position, which is that integer we were using, and just a suffix of camera so that it never will be the same as the lights. Pardon me. Um, we're then getting whatever the camera the player is currently possessing, uh, splitting out the... This only is doing transform, but you can add more stuff in here if you want. Uh, we're then saving out that, uh, you know... Saving it out, and then you know this is just spitting out a string saying, "Hey, that worked or that didn't work." Um, then when it comes to loading, we're doing the exact same thing, the same file name again. Uh, we're loading the data, and then again, actually, I'm using the light one again just to get the location and rotation. So, and then we're setting that. E Z P Z. So, um, this a couple of things to keep in mind. This is not a better option than using these variables. So if there is something where these variables in a blueprint will work, use them instead of this. So where they don't work is getting data from a packaged game back into the editor or from play mode into the editor. This is where this plugin comes. If it's just like, oh, I just want to store this data, then do it with a blueprint one, because that's going to work so much quicker. The other thing is storing a lot of data in a single U file, a U data file, is it starts to be a drag on performance when it reads that file back. So, like, that's why each light is being stored as its own file, because it's actually faster to read back lots of files with a little bit of data in it than if I was to, say, put 20 lights worth of data into one big file then it takes forever to, it just chugs along trying to read it all back. And that makes also makes your job harder because it's like, you got to, you know, it's, it only splits back out an array of floats. So then you need to somehow sort that by light.
in this case. Um, so I would I would avoid more than like I want to say like twenty. I haven't pushed it. Um, how many loads is it saving here? Nine. Nine's fine. Twenty probably fine. Fifty no. I would so I I would just like do a bit of experimenting because I haven't tested it thoroughly. Um, when you go to download this yourself, if you want it, uh, there will be another release because I've made a couple of slight tweaks to it, mainly flipping around some of the nodes on here, cleaning up some of the code, and this project I've just will have the fix in it for the um the light thing here to work. But yeah, that that is my plugin um that I have made. I'm very happy about it. Um it's more or less open source, like you can see the C++ code if you want to tinker with it. I mean, it's pretty simple, so I don't know how much you could tinker with it to begin with. Um but it shows up under blueprints and there it is, external data. So, and that just takes me to my LinkedIn. Um, yeah. So, there you go. Thank you for watching.